Hello bookish friends. A couple months ago, I moved into our new apartment and with that, I was finally able to get a in-home office slash reading room. So I created a video of me kind of building and putting together my dream reading room and it went crazy. I mean, you guys loved that video. So I thought that it'd be really fun. Now that I have been living here for a couple months, I thought it'd be fun to kind of do like an updated reorganization slash room tour because now again, like I said, that I have been here for a couple months, a lot of things have changed in this room and a lot of new additions have been made. When I first moved in, I kind of had it more as like a cozy reading space, which I absolutely loved but I quickly realized that it was not very functional when it came to like actually using it as an office. So that is like a majority of what's changed in this room and I have just kind of like moved around my bookshelves and a few other things. I also need to update my like priority TBR cart because I still have a lot of books from my, pri my 2023 priority TBR on there and things have changed a little bit. So I wanted to switch that around. But starting off, I will do just a little like 360 tour and then I will kind of go a little bit more in depth as to like what has changed and maybe do a little bookshelf tour because I, right now I have these two bookshelves and then I have another one in the corner and then my book cart. So I will start off with my 360 tour. So I am in front of my bedroom door right now. So from here and going around, here are my bookshelves. So these bookshelves were originally in the corner right here and now obviously there are two desks right there so my bookshelves are now over here and then in this corner right here is where my favorite like book series and stuff are and then this is my priority tbr and then my bed is in the same spot and then the most obvious changes are my desks so with me wanting to do more like herbal healing and kind of experiment with a lot of that. This is the area where I'm doing a lot of that stuff. And then this is where my new like workspace is. So when I work from home, like this is where I'm usually at. This is where I edit all of my videos and where I do like 90% of my computer work. So for the more in-depth tour, this is my new standing desk and this is from FlexiSpot. They were so kind and sent me this desk and I'm literally so obsessed with it. So FlexiSpot makes very, very high quality standing desks that are very stable. I mean, with standing desks, it's hard because sometimes the weight can be unevenly distributed or they just aren't very reliable and long lasting, but these ones are built to last. It's got an area right here where you can raise and lower the desk as well as save your favorite like heights. And then it's got some other plugins and stuff right here that make it very, very convenient to charge things. It honestly goes so smooth and the height range it goes is absolutely phenomenal. I'm a short person, so I really like how this goes to like the perfect height that I would be like sitting down, but it also goes very, very high up. I haven't even put it to its like tallest potential yet, but guys, this is literally how tall it goes. I'm about 5'4", five, 5'3 five, and a half, so that is like a very, very good range of height. For me, I don't like to sit down very often, especially like working a desk job. It's so much more comfortable for me to be able to like sit and stand. And they also have a 15 year warranty. So if anything goes wrong, you're covered. Alongside it having all the stuff at the corner, it also has a little drawer, which I find very convenient and it fits like all my notebooks, my Kindle, my iPad perfectly. So when I don't want like clutter on my desk, it's really easy to just like throw in here. So in here I do have my Kindle and then I usually also have all of these. So I have like a notes and plans thing, my 2024 planner and just a normal notebook to jot random stuff down in. And on the top right now, I have some library books and some gut healthy cookbooks and whatnot. And then I have my headphones because I very often reach for these. I've got my little lava lamp. And then over on this side, I have my pen and pencil holder, one of my favorite candles right now. I got this thing forever ago at the craft store, but it's perfect for like sticky notes or I put my little adapter that goes to my computer in there because it fits perfectly. So just little stuff that I reach for every day, I just kind of throw in here. And then I also have a cute little beehive pencil pouch. These mild liner highlighters have been a lifesaver because I'm such a big color coding person when it comes to like my planning and whatnot. So these have been essential 
in my desk office space. I also just put a bunch of new stickers on my computer case. I just got a clear case and I don't actually put my stickers like on the computer. I just put them underneath the clear case. Kind of like how I do with my Kindle as well. But yeah, there's my little computer tour. I love how sleek and modern this desk looks in my room. I love bamboo tops so much and I love the white, how it's just very minimal. And it just goes with everything, especially in this corner with all my plants. And I have a little stool that my plants are sitting on that is white and bamboo. So it literally matches this, this desk perfectly. If you are in need of a new desk, especially a standing desk, which I highly, highly recommend I will have the Flexi Spot link in my bio. They are selling on Amazon right now. Thank you so much to Flexi Spot for sending me this desk. It has been absolutely phenomenal so far. And it has genuinely like saved my life. When it comes to like my posture and my health in general, I feel a lot better when I'm able to like move around and not just be sitting and like stagnant all day. In this corner over here, I have my plant babies. And I finally got these two leaves to unroll because they had been rolled up for so long. And I finally got them to unroll and they are just beautiful. But I've got a bird of paradise and I've got a monstera in this corner that I've had for literal years. He wasn't happy for a while because we lived in a very dark apartment before this one, but now that we're in a lighter apartment and I also ended up getting a grow light right above it. So that's another thing that I moved. I had a lamp in one corner. So now I have this grow light in this corner and then the lamp that was over here, I moved to that corner right there. So now I'm moving over to this area. I actually picked up this desk from my mom's house. It was my grandma's in their like guest bedroom. So the thing, like I said before, that I really wanted to do with this room is I wanted to create a space where I could do like multiple things. So like I said before, in that corner is my like day-to-day -day working desk. And then in this corner is where I can do more like studying and put all my plant medicine stuff on here. And it's just, I like to keep things separate. So this feels less like work and more like a hobby versus that area of the room feels more like work and stuff. If, it's more of a mental thing. I know that doesn't really make sense to probably to a lot of people, but. So up here on my desk, I just have my essential oil diffuser. And then I also have this cute little plant. I've got some candles that I made with um, beeswax. And then over here, I just have like a little January calendar up that I'm very behind on if you can't tell. And then right here, I have all of my daily tinctures and whatnot that I I take and I also have an earthly affiliate link now so if you guys wanted to shop some of the earthly products you can use the link it'll be in my description below and then I also just have some of my like herbal medicine books right here my little Bible, notebook. I have a few more books kind of like this, but these are the main ones that I like to look at and study the most. Then I just have my water bottle and my ZZ plant. Um, I obviously still need to get a desk chair because I do not have one, but under there, I just kind of have my daily like bags and stuff that I use. So they're out of the way. I don't have much in these drawers right now. I get really snacky in the evening. So I have like some chocolate chips in there and then a crochet project that I was working on. And then down here is where I keep all of my camera equipment and whatnot and then th these two drawers are empty right now because I, I just don't really have anything to put in them yet but once I get more like herbal stuff and I get more like supplies for that because I would really love to start making herbal remedies and whatnot and just like kind of experimenting with the whole thing at some point so I will need a place to put all that stuff. So that is where that stuff is gonna go. Moving over to this corner. This hasn't really changed. I mean, my bed has been in the same spot, but I did add that lamp up here and that's the one that used to be in this corner. I just thought it looked better right there and it was really nice, especially when I was like in bed reading at night. And then going over to this corner. So this is where I have my monthly TBR and then I have my priority TBR and then down here, is where I keep all of my book sleeves. I get all of my book sleeves from Needle and Stitch Co. And I do have a discount code, which is Faith's Reading Things 20. She is the sweetest girl in the entire world. And she actually lives around my area. So she's local to me, which is so fun. She makes the best quality book sleeves and the cutest ones. I'll just show you a little bit of my collection. So in the mini size, which fits your Kindle, I have these two super cute prints. This one's kind of like a Christmassy letters to Santa like type of thing. And then this beautiful, gorgeous one is 
kind of like a dusty mauve with some like floral designs on it. She just recently started making zipper pouches for your Kindle. So this is a new product that she has launched. And this print is just absolutely adorable. And it's got a little flower charm right here for the zipper. I just think it's the cutest thing ever. And then in the medium size, this fits like a normal paperback and hardback I believe and it's also got a front little pocket but I've got this cute one with cats and plants she knows me so well and then this super cute one that has a bunch of like classic books on it you can't really tell right now but it's got some like gold shiny gold stuff in it and then I've got this super cute little modern green stripey sleeve this one I use so much in the summertime and then I've got a cute little cat one again this is like a cat Christmas thing it's got cats and little Christmas wreaths on it and this is in the biggie size so this is like the big size this is the medium size and then this is the mini size just so you can see like comparison when you're ordering them. And then one of my friends got this cute little book sleeve for me for Christmas from, I think it was like a local maker's market. So I thought that that was really fun. So yeah, I have book sleeves, they all live down here. But this is the one thing that I wanted to change really quick. Right now on my priority TBR, I have Green Glass House, I have the Prison Healer, the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, the House in the Pines, the Dead Romantics, Once Upon a Broken Heart, the Obsession and Lovely and the Lost, Assassin's Blade, although I don't know if I'm going to start with this one or Throne of Glass. I know there's so many thoughts on this, like the reading order for this. I don't personally know which one I want to do, but I'm either going to start with the Assassin's Blade or Throne of Glass, so either one of those is on here really. And then I also have Six of Crows, The Evil Queen, Enchanted Hill, and the last one is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So I made this priority TBR probably in like October, November of last year, so there's a few that kind of are seasonally not relevant anymore. So I wanted to take out the very secret society of regular witches, dead romantics. I'll probably take out the Assassin's Blade because I still have to read Akatar and I just don't, I don't want to start this before I finish that. So I'll take these three out. Now which three do I want to put in? Okay, so I think in their place I'm going to do the Seven Year Slip, Icebreaker, and The Darkest Minds. These three I feel like are just ones that I have been wanting to get to sooner than others. So I think that would be a fun little swap. And then in my little January TBR bucket. The ones that I still have yet to read are The Mountain in the Sea, Love Theoretically, Skyward, A Court of Mist and Fury, and Live No Lies by John Mark Comer. These were all ones that I picked out in my January like TBR jar picks my reads for the month. I've read two books off my TBR and that is Powerless and First Lie Wins. Other than that, I am not doing super great when it comes to reading my actual like January TBR. But anyway, now that that's done, we're going to move on to the rest of the corner. So over here, this is just where my favorite series live. So on the top, of course, I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, as well as Five Survive. I know that's not part of a series, but it's, it's still part of Holly Jackson's like books. So I just thought it fit with that. And then right next to it, I have The One of Us is Lying duology. I still have to get the third one, but I was waiting for it to come out in paperback, so I had like all paperbacks. And then next to that, I have The Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black, My Pride and Joy. And then next to that, I have Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen. And then next to that, I have the Stocking Jack the Ripper series. I didn't really like these last two books, but the first two I absolutely loved, so I just kind of kept the whole series on my shelf. And then down here, I have one of my favorite series of all time which is the natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I don't have the physical first copy but I have the rest of them and then of course the inheritance games trilogy and then over here I have the Finley Donovan. Right now it's a trilogy but I believe the fourth book comes out like mid-year this year maybe even in like March or April. And then I have the Percy Jackson series. I've actually only read the first book in this series, but I'm planning to get to the rest of them this year. And then I have the Shatter Me series, which I really loved the first three books. 
The fourth one I didn't really like that much. The fifth one was okay, but I loved the ending and I still haven't even finished Imagine Me. So I really need to finish that. And then of course over here I have the Harry Potter series because what would my life be without it? So now for the last part of the room, the most exciting part is my bookshelves. So the order of my books, I don't think has really changed since my last video. Well, the video where I like put this room together. But if you haven't seen that video yet, I will kind of go through my bookshelves and what they look like right now. So I got these two shelves from Target. I think they were like $30 each and they have um, three tiers. So on this first bookshelf, I just have all of my fantasy and then on the bottom shelf is some like middle grade and just other books that I didn't really know where to put. <laughs> I do my organizing by color and by genre. I just, I like it better that way. It works better in my brain. It looks better on my eyeballs. I've just like with all the different ways that I have tried to reorganize my shelf, I always go back to color and genre. I'm extremely excited for these two books right here. This is the Alice Curse and Second Star to the Left. These are adult romance slash fantasy fairy tale retellings. I am obsessed with Alice in Wonderland so I will get every single Alice in Wonderland retelling that I can find and then this one I believe was like a Tinkerbell retelling so very very excited for those I've been telling myself that I'm going to read 10,000 Doors of January for the literal longest time and I still have not gotten to it for some reason but I'm very excited for this in the spring this is actually a Tahara Moffey book and that is the author of the Shatter Me series this is a middle grade kind of like a fantasy book but a lot of people have said that this kind of relates to Alice in Wonderland Wonderland, so of course I had to get it. Down here on the second shelf is just where more of my fantasies live and also my cute little gnome snow globe. I know he's a little Christmassy but he was just too cute not to keep on my shelf. I'm obviously very very excited for the Throne of Glass series. I only have the first four books but I thought that that was probably good to buy because like what if I didn't like it? I mean I know I probably will but like what if I didn't like it? I didn't want to have the whole series you know but I do have the OG cover of Throne of Glass in the first one and then the rest of the covers are the new covers so that really bothers me but eventually I will get the cover to match the rest. This is another Alice in Wonderland retelling. It's called Unbirthday by, I can't even remember who it's by, Liz Braswell. She writes a bunch of like Disney retellings so I thought these would be really fun. Red Rising is one that has been on my TBR for a little bit but everybody freaking raves about it so I need to get to that very soon. This one has so many mixed reviews but my friend Ashlyn read it and really likes this book so I was like okay I have to give it a try. This one looked really funny. It's a sci-fi book but it just reminds me so much of Elle from Stranger Things so I was like I feel like this would just be a really fun book. I have the rest of the Holly Black collection, a special edition of Belladonna that I am absolutely obsessed with. It is just beautiful. Still haven't read it, but this edition was beautiful, so I had to get it. And then on the bottom here, this is just like some extra fantasy as well as some like middle grade and just other books that I didn't really know what to do with or where to put. These two I'm actually thinking about maybe getting rid of because I just, after doing more research, I just don't know if I will like them. So I'm keeping them down here just to think about if I wanted to keep them or not. Spiderwick, I, this is literally my entire childhood, and I found a book that has all five books in one, and I did not even realize that this book is actually written by Holly Black and another author. So growing up, I was like, no wonder The Folk of the Air is my, my favorite trilogy because this was literally my childhood. So was Inkheart. I feel like I had these books for so many years and I just loved them so much. Over here is where I have all of my romance and rom-coms as well as just like general fiction. I'm so excited to get into Catherine Center's writing and I've heard so many good things about this book. I've got some Emily Henry on here. This one I've heard super good things about as well so I'm very very excited to get into this one. It just looks so cute and wholesome. This one right here I don't hear many things about but after reading the synopsis it actually looks so cute and so good and I love her tattoos. I got the Summer I Turn Pretty series. I have not read this yet but I've heard nothing but good things and I'm really excited to read this obviously in the summer. Same with to all the boys I've loved before. I feel like I hear so many good things about this book and I think I watched part of the TV series a couple years ago like whenever it came out and I really liked it. I don't know. 
This would be a cute little spring summer read as well. Down here is where I have all of my thrillers. And like I said this before, but for a girl who reads a lot of thrillers, I really don't own a lot of thrillers. And I think that's because thrillers can just be so hit or miss versus like with fantasy and romance, I feel like there's a lot of things that you can like about the book. And there's just like a lot of different elements. So like keeping them feels a little bit more justified. I don't know. That's just like something in my brain. I'm very excited for this one because this is a Jennifer Lynn Barnes book. And if you haven't noticed, I'm pretty obsessed with her writing. This one I've heard is an absolute mind F and it's a little bit hard to follow, but the synopsis just sounds so good. And this is probably one of the prettiest covers that I own. So there's that. Billy Summers, I was thinking about getting rid of because I don't know. I just, I know I hear a lot of really good things about it and I feel like it would be a really good book, but I've also heard that there's a lot of triggers and there's just a lot of things in it that can be kind of harmful for a certain audience to read. So I just, I don't know. I'm very, very hesitant about this one. This one also is another one that I've heard really good and crazy things about, but I have also heard that it's a little bit like messed up. So I'm nervous to go into this one, but I'm also very, very intrigued by it. Hi, I'm just in this little corner. <laughs> and then down here on the bottom is where I have all of my hardbacks, as well as my special edition of The Cruel Prince, which if you have not seen this, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a black velvet. But then on the inside, it has this beautiful artwork. The rest of the inside is pretty normal. It just has the really pretty artwork next to all of the chapters and whatnot, but there's nothing else super significantly interesting about it. But on the back, there is like a deleted scene or I guess deleted scenes. Yeah, right here. Deleted scenes of the Cruel Prince. And I'm so excited to read those. But I just thought, I mean, this is one of my favorite books. This is one of my favorite book series. So I just, I feel like I had to get the special edition because I don't ever buy special editions. I only have the Belladonna one and then now this one. And I just think it's so fun and so pretty. I don't think I'm going to be one of those people who like buys a lot of special editions because I just don't, I don't feel like it's really worth it if I already have a copy of the book. But if it is like my favorite books, then I will make an exception. But yeah, friends, that's about it for my reading room reorganization tour. I have had a lot of fun putting this room together and watching it change and evolve. As I start to change and evolve as a content creator, as a business person, I have spent so much of my time in this room and this is where I spend like 90% of my time. So I have definitely loved making it my my own and just putting so much love into it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little tour and maybe got some like home decor slash organization ideas for your own home. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Again, if you are looking for a new desk, I would definitely recommend following the link in my description to get yourself a standing flexi spot desk. I literally love it so much. It's, <laughs> it's so perfect for me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.